Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, I'm going to be recycling one tool into two. And I'm going to provide myself with something that I think every blacksmith shop should have, even if you're just starting off. Now, I came across this in the tool shed. In fact, I've got um, two of these. And I'm not even really sure what they were for. Um, I don't know if they have something to do with like uh, car wheels or, or what. I mean, it looks kind of big and awkward to be a grub axe, even though that's how it's shaped. But um, I'm going to be taking one of these, and I'm going to be turning it into two separate tools. Uh, I'm going to be taking this, straightening it out, and turning this end of the hammer into a um, cutoff hardy, because I don't have a good one. In fact, I don't have a proper one. The one that I made is this guy right here, and this was never designed to cut steel. I wanted something that I could put in my hardy hole and use to cut kindling for the fireplace. So once I lob this end off, I'm still going to have the entire hammerhead to work with. Now the other tool that I don't have that I really should have is a flatter. Now basically a flatter is nothing more than a sledgehammer with a steel plate about three inches by three inches on the front of it. Most of these are forged into shape. Um, I do not have a boatload of propane to play with that. Um, in fact, this week, cash is so tight, I have a half a tank of gas in my truck, and if that doesn't last me for the week, I'm going to have to borrow money from somebody. Um, I have a couple of outstanding jobs, but um, I don't think I'm going to get them before I get paid this week. So, yeah, I'm working with what I've got. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of three, I believe this is three and a half inches wide, I'm going to cut a three and a half inch square out of this piece. Um, it's three quarters of an inch thick and I am going to weld that to the back of that hammer and turn it into a flatter. So the first thing I did was cut the handle off and then I drilled a bunch of relief holes through here. This handle seems like it was a little bit damp when I pulled it out of the shed so uh, it's going to be real tough to get out of the head but that should help things a great deal. Now I do have a video out there on YouTube that talks about how to remove hammerheads uh, from their handles or vice versa. Being a little dyslexic today but that's okay because I am a little dyslexic from time to time. And that's how easy it is to get the handle out. Just need a little elbow grease. And here are the uh, what's left of the handle. Somebody didn't have a proper wedge, so they ended up using a washer. But uh, well, that's done. All right, guys, got this set up in my metal cutting chop saw. Regular abrasive blade. I wouldn't try using one of those carbide tip blades for this. Don't know what kind of steel this is, and those blades are expensive. Um, Hearing protection, eye protection is a must. Uh, you may even want to wear a face shield, but uh, for right now, I think I'm pretty well protected with what I've got. So let's get cutting. All right, guys. Ah, oh, got pretty hot back there, huh? Well. It's cut, nothing's on fire, move on to the next step. All right, YouTube, so I've made my cuts. This piece is gonna be hopefully turned into a cutoff hardy. I'm gonna have to do some forge work to it. Uh, this piece is still kinda hot, because I just took it off the saw. But this is the head, and this is the plate that I'm gonna be using as the business end of my flatter. So I'm gonna clean up the hammerhead, and I'm gonna get to welding. All right, YouTube, in the interest of saving time, I welded this off camera, but this is going to be the head of my flatter. Um, I went and I cleaned up the old handle. I'm going to put it right back in, sanded this down a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to sandblast this and give it a quick coat of paint, but other than that, this part's pretty much done. This is what I'm left with. This was the end of that hammer, and this is what I want to make my cutoff hardy out of. 
Um, I try to leave myself enough material where I could make the post for my hardy tool with the material that's already available. I don't want to weld a post on. I actually want to see if I could forge this down to fit. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is straighten this out, get the curve out of it, um, and then start reducing this and fattening this up a bit. So let me fire up the forge and get to it. Alright guys, that's all I'm going to do with the forging. Um, I think I'm just going to clean up the rest of it with a, a grinder because I don't want to have it too loose. And I'm just having a little problem <coughs> necking it at the top. I did switch to a smaller hammer to try to get some more controlled blows, but um, yep, yeah, I'm going to finish it from here on out with machinery. Okay, so unfortunately I've got to cut this video a little bit shorter than I would like, but the only thing that's left to do really is finish up the hardy tool. Now, what I need to do is come in, I'm going to put it back in the forge, I'm going to start doing an edge bevel on the forge, I've never done that before, so I'm going to experiment with this piece and see if I can get a decent edge bevel before I grind and sharpen it. Um, that is something that has been posted on YouTube a million times over, so um, I really don't think you're going to miss out much on me not showing that on camera. but. What I did want to show is how uh, I was able to get this down. I did use a grinder. I didn't completely do it by hand, but uh, this fits nice in the hardy hole. Uh, I may put a collar around here so it sits flat on the surface of the anvil. I don't know yet. It might not need it. Uh, I'll discover that after I sharpen it and actually begin to use it. Uh, the flatter, I am real happy with. Uh, as you can see, it's just very basic. I'm going to clean that off. I just spray painted the whole thing to keep it kind of... Uh, rust free and you could see that the business end of this is nice flat this was a machined piece of steel um, it's not O1 one or tool steel or anything like that because it does scratch a little bit but uh, I like it because it was machined flat I found it at the scrap yard and just cut off a little piece and as you could see that is a halfway decent flatter okay folks before I wrap up the video I want to give you one final thought and this thought is actually my two cents on a conversation that's been going on for quite a while on the forums and a bunch of other places. And the conversation deals with things like people saying, um, if you're using a propane forge, you're not a real blacksmith. If you are uh, not making your own tools, you're not a real blacksmith. If you can't do this, that, and the other thing, you're not a real blacksmith. And sometimes people find that to be discouraging. There are people like me, I do what I have to do to get my job done. I don't care if it's necessarily traditional. Um, I, as a blacksmith, and I'm just starting out here, I use what I have to get the tools that I need to learn more about the blacksmithing craft. Now, <clears throat> am I forging my tools? No. Am I making flatters the right way? No. That's not the point. And this debate where people seem to belittle others who are 
using what they have at their disposal and say that they're not real blacksmiths or they're not real craftsmen or things like that, I want the traditional blacksmith community to think about one thing. In the old days, if somebody had walked into a blacksmith shop and they see this marvel hanging on the post and it's got gears and levers and things and it's capable of drilling a hole through solid steel and they've never seen it before. And I'm talking about a post drill press. That is going to be like today, walking into a shop and seeing a CNC plasma cutter in the corner of the room. It's technology. It's new. It's cutting edge. Did they have CNC plasma cutting equipment in traditional blacksmith shops? No. But I want you to consider one historical fact, and if you're a traditionalist and you admire the history behind blacksmithing, I think you might agree with me. Blacksmiths traditionally have always been at the cutting edge of their craft. Right up until we started getting into the Industrial Revolution, the blacksmith was the cornerstone of many communities. And they had cutting edge tools, cutting edge techniques. They were highly skilled in what they did. Keeping with that tradition, some of us modern blacksmiths, if you want to call us that, we use current technology along with the lessons learned in the past to move this into the next generation. None of us are going out there claiming to be traditional blacksmiths. We just call ourselves smiths or fabricators or welders or machinists. But all of those trades come from what was ultimately two rocks. A rock as an anvil and a rock as a hammer. That's where all of this evolved from. So if you're just starting out, I want to give you some words of encouragement. Do what you can to get your job done. Do what you can to advance yourself and advance your skill level. Do I make flatters the right way? Like I said, no. But is it going to work? Is it going to allow me to experiment and do other things? Hell yes! And someday when I have a coal forge in the shop that I really want and I have time to kill and I don't have to worry about my budget or how much propane I have left in my tank and I can take a Saturday and say, hey, I'm going to make myself a flatter. And by that time, I'm going to have a lot of the skills necessary to complete that task. But in the meantime, this is what I had. This is what I was able to produce. So in the tradition and in the spirit of the blacksmith, do what you can to get your job done. Do it well. It doesn't have to be the way everyone else does it. And if you go out and you do something on your own and it's completely different from anything else you've seen on YouTube, please take a video of it, throw it up there. I might learn something from you. Other Smiths might learn something from you. I just want to leave you with that thought. So until the next video, this has been Dark Moon Metals. I'm Jeff, and I'll see you again soon.